Shalom, shalom to the family street baptism back with more knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we believe comes directly from the Father through his son, Yeshua, Yahushua, or Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Whichever pronunciation somebody decides to use is all right according to the word of God, as long as you call it on the Father in the name of his only begotten. Praise God, and that's the truth according to his word. Much love to the family and the individuals trying to follow in the footsteps of the Messiah and live while he lived while he was here in truth and sincerity by way of humility praise god street baptism back hallelujah the most high has allowed us to come back again and again and again so we have to continue coming back again and again and again and you know try to do our best as far as what the most high has provided to us as the inhabitants of the earth forgive me y'all all right so this is going to be part two concerning psalm 131 which is a part of, in a broader sense, the curriculum entitled Foundational Principles. Praise God. Now, Psalm 131, part two, we going into the language. As we read, it says, Childlike trust in the Lord is the heading that the Blue Letter Bible and the people that they got working with them decided to put here. It says, a song of degrees of David. It says, the Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty neither do i exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me so now what does it mean my heart my heart is not haughty nor are mine eyes lofty his heart is his mind praise god it says lo gove libi lo gove libi <clears throat> so now haughty is a perfect third person masculine singular verb and what does haughty mean here in the wilhelm jacinius it means literally to be high to be exalted to be elevated my, my mind is not elevated it says to lift up itself to take courage in a good sense which means in a bad sense it may it may be being confident in a plain way like sirach 32 says not to be to be proud as well so he says his heart as we understand here, praise God, looking at the word for heart, lave, as we always dig into foundational principles, these specific terms are a part of foundational principles to the word for soul or the word for life, the word for um, the word for heart, praise God, the word for thoughts, the word for peace, the word for watch. These are important terms that we find over and over in the Bible. And now. This word, this term here, lave, is equivalent to lavav, as it says here in the root word etymology, it's a form of lavav. And what does it mean? As the definition of be here in this one, lavav, it says the heart, perhaps so caught from being hollow, so caught from fatness. And heart is directly related to the word hard, by the way. That's why our hearts are hard. We look up, we look into the etymology. You will understand a lot better. Praise God. This stuff concerning words, this information concerning words and etymology and the truth of definitions and numbers, man, it's some of the most intricate stuff you can find. So this this uh, Hebrew term for heart can also be used for nefesh, as it says here, the soul or life. But it's usually used as the seat of the senses, affections and emotions of the mind or the seat of thoughts and emotions, as it says elsewhere. The seat of the senses, affections, meaning what you feel and emotions, meaning what moves out of the mind. Praise God. It says of various kinds as love. Praise God. Hmm. It says here it is applied to the mode of thinking and acting because what you say foundational principles and what you do is based on what you think, what comes out of your heart. Praise God. So now he says his affections, his emotions and his thoughts are not haughty or proud or confident in a plain way. And it says, nor mine eyes lofty. What is word for lofty in the Hebrew? Is the same term for proud look in Proverbs 6 and 17 on the list of the six things the most high hates. It says what? To lift up oneself, to rise, to arise, to grow. So now he says his, his, his emotions and his thoughts and his affections are not proud. 
lifted up, exalted, elevated. So he doesn't, in other words, think too much of himself and what he has and who he is on the earth. And then he says, nor mine eyes or his perception, mind you, when you go into this word in the Hebrew, what does it say? It says an eye before the eyes, according to or here, as it says, bay a nigh, bay a nigh. In my eyes, i.e. according to my judgment, as it seems to me, in my opinion, by which in Hebrew, the sense of to seem, praise God, videri or uh, videri, uh, which I believe is the uh, equivalent Latin term, which we get video from or, you know, words of that nature. Forgive me. To seem. It also has other meanings. Now, let's look real quick here. What does it say? Strong's definition says probably a primitive word, an eye, literally or figuratively, by analogy, a fountain as the eye of the landscape. Praise God. So this is your perception as well or your outlook or worldview on things. So he says his worldview or his perception is not lofty or risen up or elevated in the same. Praise God. And then he says, neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Why are we reading this in foundational principles? Because we talking about the beginning of your walk. How do you come in with your cleansing, showing at the most high that you want whatever knowledge and wisdom he wants to provide to you? This is the beginning of it. This man here that's speaking this psalm is the king. And he's saying this about he, he just said he not too proud or not my fault, not too proud. He's not elevated. Or lifted up in his mind, his thoughts, and his outlook, and he the king. He don't think his status is too much, and he the king. We got people on earth right now that's not even kings in the seat of a prince, uh, the seat of somebody that got a power, uh, power of judgment or nothing like that, and they still arrogant. So we, as they say, topsy turvy. We gotta go back the other way. We gotta get humble so we can be exalted. We exalting ourselves, and that's why we down here in the bottom. That's the base teaching of the Bible. That's the main thing the Messiah came to teach was humility. That's a fact. Praise God. Neither do I exercise myself. And I mentioned in the last video that exercise is just a word here for, for walk. And it says here in the Hebrew, he laked T. He locked or he locked T. He locked T. And it's a PL verb stem attached to this word. So what does it mean? We got to find PL. Let's find it real quick. PL right here. Now we got to look for the meanings. Now it can mean to go, to walk. It can also mean or be used as to fall upon anyone. And there's the, the Latin equivalent. Praise God. Used as a robber or an attacker. So he's saying he doesn't endeavor in things that are uh, too great for him or too high. Praise God. Now, what's great matters? Great here is just the word gadol, as people know, is usually just great, something of magnitude, something large or broad. I believe this is the same word used for magnify when it says in uh, Isaiah 42 that the Messiah was going to magnify the law, meaning to make it greater, to put a magnifying glass on it, to provide more detail. Neither do I exercise myself or go forward or walk in great matters or in things too high for me. What is, what is something from King, King, David, King David's perspective that's too high for him? And here's a Nafal verse that attached to this word. Too high for him or distinguished from him. Praise God. Hence to be great or extraordinary. To be ard arduous. To be difficult to be done. Who is he speaking about? He's speaking about things that the Most High does. That he reveals to men. Praise God. And everybody from the nation of Israel or everybody on the earth don't receive the same revelations. Praise God. So this is what King David is saying. Let's go on to the next verse. It says, surely. Surely. I have behaved and quieted myself or my soul. So that even my, the word myself is the same word for soul. Praise God. 
Surely I have behaved and quieted my soul. What is behave? This is what we want here. Forgive me. It's a PL verb stem attached to this word. To make level. As, as we say on the earth, to be level headed. So now King David is saying he's level headed. How do you connect this to the verse before it? Because if you too high or if you too deep in the stuff that ain't got nothing to do with you, or you too high in your arrogance, or you trying to be too deep as people that's trying to look smarter than they really are, be trying to be too deep, as we say, then you're not level headed. To be level means to be on the plane that you need to be on. Well, to be on the plane that you need to be on has everything to do with the knowledge that the most high did or didn't provide to you. On a scale, as far as wisdom, some people is higher than other people, some people is lower. As far as patience, some people is higher, some people is lower. Praise God. You always at a, at, at a uh, spot as we are different people. But to be level or to make level, it could also mean to put or to set what, where, where it needs to be. You setting yourself where you need to be. Actually, if you look up the word, if you look up the word, uh, just real quick. If you look up the word pride or proud, it says here in the Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, feeling or showing pride such as the first definition, having or displaying excessive self-esteem. Now, it has different definitions here, and we use the biblical definitions. Uh, for things here at Street Baptism primarily, and then we um, use etymology after going into the original language. But it says here, excessive self-esteem. And Oxford Languages Dictionary is going to say the same thing when you look on Google, because that's the dictionary you're using when you go on Google and look up words. It says the same thing. You got too much self-esteem, meaning you don't know where you need to be, meaning you're not level. You're doing too much or you're not doing enough. Praise God. Because in some sense, having too much self-esteem or not having enough is the same because not having enough means you're weak and having too much makes you weak because usually people that have too much, they arrogant, proud, and they start talking down to other people. These be the bullies in school, the people that talk crazy to anybody. So it's kind of one and the same. But now that's what behave means. What does quieted mean? My fault. This is a polel verb stem attached to this word. And a polel verb stem is not one of the main verb stems that you see, but it is used here. And polel here most likely is poel right here. And it says, though main is how it's used or how it's rendered in the uh, text every now and again. But, forgive me, y'all. With that being said, it means, I was going to look in a brown driver bridge, but I'll stay here. To bring to silence or to compose. What does it mean if you say, be composed? Or what is decomposition? Or what does it mean if you compose something and you put it together? Praise God. Or That's what I'm looking for when people say, hold your composure. Forgive me, y'all. Hold your composure. What does it mean? It means chill. Calm is together or with. Pose is like a stance or a pose when you take a picture. Praise God. So that basically means don't do anything. This is what he's saying because he's comparing himself to a baby. A well, baby can't walk. Child that's on the titty can't walk. They can't feed themselves. They can barely move their arms. Shoot, they can barely control their head. Feel what I'm saying? Somebody else is doing that for them. The father, the creator, and the mother, which is wisdom, according to the scriptures. Praise God. Foundational principles. So he says, I behaved and quieted myself or my soul as a child that is weaned. The word for weaned here is gomal. But in the text, it says, kegamul or kegamul. Kegamul. And what does it mean? Shoot. Why do I keep doing it? It means, it's a call verb stem, to give, to do, to shoot to anyone, good or evil. 
Praise God. It could also mean to do good. It could also mean to repay to anyone good. It can also mean to wean an infant. And it has the other definition of good because weaning an infant is good, y'all. Stay out of them hospitals with that Similac. Praise God. The Hebrew language tells us everything we need to know in language, period. But it says to wean an infant. Here, the fifth def definition used in Numbers 17.23 as an intransitive can mean to become ripe. Because you ripen in a child. Because a child is fruit. Praise God. It's a seed that you that you planted. Somebody planted the seed and you cultivate the seed as the woman. The man plants it, you cultivate it, and then you raise it up by providing to it what it needs as it grows. The same way you do a tree or a plant. Water, sunlight, food, or nutrients. Praise God. Whatever's necessary for whatever you're talking about. So now... In the Brown Driver Briggs lexicon, it says it can mean to deal fully or, or adequately with, meaning to give enough, to deal out. So in other words, King David is saying also that he's satisfied because the child, after they get the food they need, after they get changed and they get enough sleep, they be good. Babies usually cry when it's something that they need or something that they lack in. And this is what King David is saying about himself. He's lacking something. So that, that's why he can't say anything. He can't do nothing. He know that he lacking. As the king, he know he lacking. Again, we down here with a lesser status or a status less significant than his status. And we arrogant. This is why it says in Sirach 25 that a poor man is proud don't make no sense. Praise God. This is why these scriptures that was chosen, praise God, as we believe through the spirit was chosen for the curriculum foundational principles. It all makes sense as, as far as the basis of what the most high is trying to get us to understand is concerned. As a child weaned of his mother, it says even as a weaned child, my soul, praise God. My soul is even as a weaned child, meaning his life. Praise God. And again, let's look here. Here's the verb. It can mean breath, as in Job 41 and 13. The soul in which the Latin equivalent is anima, which is where we get words like animate or animation from. It has to do with the movement of something. Praise God, which is why, for example, when you look at cartoons known as animations or even looking at anime, which is short for animations. They take fake characters and they personify them, whether it's an actual person, a car, a truck, an animal, whatever. That's what they do. So now it says by which and actually the Greek term here is here, too. This is where we get the word psychology from. It says it says sukhe. I believe that's a suhe or psych. That's where we get the word psychology from. Praise God, by which the body lives, the token of which life is drawing breath. Praise God. And the Latin, right, there we go again, Latin, anima. And the Hebrew term is ruach. That's another word that's kind of in the same uh, realm with this word, life. Forgive me, y'all. I'm sure they let that last uh, ad play. I ain't even paying attention. But so your soul is your life. And here, Brown Driver Briggs, it says soul, living being, life, self, person, desire, appetite, meaning you, yourself personally, emotion and passion. Praise God. Hmm. Surely I behaved or made myself level, meaning again, going back to verse one, I'm not too high. I'm not trying to be too deep, getting into things that's too high for me or, or too great for me. Trying to make it seem as if I know more than I do. This is all things that people do. These are tendencies and characteristics of most people on the earth. Again, foundational principles. We're trying to deal with the characteristics, the psychology of man, his makeup, his nature, what he's about, what he thinks about in general, knowing everybody's different. Mankind, though, in general, how, how he moves. That's what God is trying to show us. Psalm 131, the last verse says, let Israel hope. In the Lord from henceforth and forever. Let Israel expect from the Lord, in other words, from now and forever. What does expectation have, have to do with what we was just reading? Well, when you a child weaned to your mama and you're waiting for your father to do stuff for you, that's your expectation. You expect stuff from them. You hope. That's what that hope is. It's an expectation. But let's get the term used here for hope. It says, Yahel. From the root, Yahel. It says, Yahel. From the root, your hell. And it's a P.O. verb stem attached to this word. So what does it mean? To expect, as we see here first, my fault, to cause to hope. 
to expect, to hope, to wait. Because you gotta wait. You making, you listen, you making food for your two year old. What they gonna have to do? They gonna have to wait. They might start crying because they hungry and they don't realize what waiting means. You gotta teach them, but they still gotta wait. Praise God. And that's what this word means. And. Hmm. Is the Lord from henceforth and forever. Praise God from henceforth and forever. Ever is Olam, the word which comes from the root Olam, which means literally to hide or to keep something secret. So Olam means eternity. That's why it's used forever here. Praise God from henceforth and forever. And henceforth just means now, right? Henceforth is the word that means at this time already, in a time now, etc. And this, again, this psalm is a part of foundational principles because of the basics it provides to us as far as what the Most High is pleased with. Once again, this man is King David. He's the king. Yet he's speaking about how he doesn't think too much of his status on earth or what the father gave him. Nobody has a higher status than him. Yet he's very, very, very humble, which is why he's been given the highest status in the first place. It's the same with the Messiah. The Messiah made himself lower than anybody on the earth, which is why the Most High made him higher than anybody on the earth. That's why nobody's reputation or their name can proceed or uh, go past his. Praise God. So with that being said, um, much love to the family. Check out Foundational Principles and the, 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 the rest of the YouTube channel. Check out that playlist, the rest of the playlist, and uh, stay in tune. We in the last days. There ain't too much time left. We all trying to get right. Um, before we see that judgment seat of Christ, praise God. With that being said, much love to the family. Shalom, shalom, street baptism. Out. Oh.